were talking about Dorian all of last week. We'll be talking about Dorian pretty much all of this week. Not only with the storm as it makes progress, but the aftermath for the communities that will be affected. Florida is now taking the brunt of the storm as it works its way along the coast. You can see on the this is a live uh, Melbourne Doppler and you can see the eye still remains very well defined. Not as well defined as it was sitting over the Bahamas, but still it is trying to get a new band of reorganization going here as it's coming back over some warmer water. We'll get to all the reasons why coming up. So there again is your live look as we will take you to a satellite perspective and go back to early this morning when the storm was just leaving the Bahamas. And you can see this, the eye was still very well defined at that point. As we've gone through the day today, the storm has encountered water where basically it had been worked over, so not quite the heat content. And so we lost some of the definition there in the eye. Also, we're getting some dry air being pulled off of Florida. So again, not quite the satellite presentation that it had. All that said, it's still a 110 mile per hour category two hurricane moving northwest at six. And as it comes back over some of the Gulf Stream water here, some reintensification, it's a possibility as it works its way to the north and northwest. At the very least, should maintain pretty close to this strength. We have hurricane warnings now along the central Florida coast all the way up to the Georgia line. It's tropical storm warnings in Georgia where the coast moves back to the west, becomes hurricane warnings again going through the coastal areas of South Carolina. 110 mile per hour category two hurricane. It remains as such as it passes Cape Canaveral late tonight as it works its way then past, I'll say about Jacksonville tomorrow afternoon, remains category two at 110 along the Georgia coast where it's further away. That's the tropical storm warning. But again, the storm maintains its strength. But then Charleston Myrtle Beach, if this storm does not make that bend, could be impacted greatly by the remnants of this storm as it continues on to the north and northeast and eventually accelerates on out into the North Atlantic doing what hurricanes are supposed to do. But again, it's the track. Any variance of this, even by 20, 30 miles, means you would bring the worst of the winds back closer to the Florida and Georgia coast. The high winds, the heavy surf all go along with that. If it ends up being a little further out, the effects aren't quite as bad. There are storm surge warnings up all along the coastal areas of Florida up into the Carolinas and Georgia now. And what the storm surge does essentially takes sea level and because of the winds and the pressure of the storm, the sea level gets raised. So you start with a higher beginning point. And when that happens, now the waves come in on top of it. You begin to breach the sand dunes, the sea walls and damage can occur. Now, if the storm remains parallel to the coast, it's not the worst case scenario, but still can end up being bad. Jacksonville got hit by Matthew with a storm that was moving parallel to the coast. If it comes in perpendicular, you just begin to take that exponentially. So let's give you a live or a look, not live. This is a time lapse for you. Ormond Beach, Florida, that's a little north of Daytona. So people have been walking along the beaches today. Not the smartest thing to do in the world, obviously. And you can see some of the squalls now coming in to Ormond Beach, and we'll continue to give those looks as long as we can. But history has done its job, where we have not had a major hurricane hit along that central northern Florida coast since 1950 of a major hurricane. So that will continue. And the storm finally has hit that weakness that we were talking about. So today it's impacting Florida, but there are the highs. And it's gone in between the two. And as it does that, eventually that trough that's going to bring our cooler air is going to catch Dorian and lift it up to the north and northeast and away. Dorian is weaker, but still very dangerous. For us, that weak cool front, clouds and a wind shift, and that'll be about it because Dorian has brought about all the moisture into it. There's just not much left over. So the high pressure will slide off to the east tonight. We've got good southwesterly winds continuing, and it's been a hot day today. We're sitting at 89 at the Bluegrass Airport after another 90 degree day. Mainly clear. It's a warm summer night tonight. We'll be in the upper 60s tomorrow. Let's go with partly to mostly sunny, pushing hot. It's going to be a humid day. We'll be in the mid 80s. Look at the nice weather coming in Thursday, Friday, going into the weekend. Low humidity, temperatures upper 70s to around 80 and very little in the way of rain. Yeah, look at it. I know it was such a nice forecast that we took a nice close up of Nancy smiling about. Uh, oh, it. I missed yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm happy. Well, I'm very happy always. <laughs>